Okay, kind of a weird video. We cleared HTCM obviously a few weeks ago. Maybe you saw my video on the main channel about that, where I kind of did a big breakdown uh, of the full fight. I didn't just do a casual commentary with no pausing or anything. Um, and we cleared it again last week. We're now going to do a role reversal thing where we try different builds. Like, I'm going to be playing mech next. So, I had incentive to just upload a clear with my Herald POV. Um, but also, I haven't any content on WP2 for a while. So I figured, hey, I'll just post this and uh, talk through the run with no pausing and talk a tiny bit about what I'm doing. Uh, this isn't for anyone specifically. You guys can mute if you don't want the commentary. But yeah, here's uh, another run of HTCM. I'm on the same build and the same role as what I was playing on the video on the main channel. This run is a really sloppy run. This is quite a fun run because this is quite sloppy. There's disaster strikes in the middle of this and we recover. And uh, I can talk a little bit about how the knock-on effect of that can really really make the whole run really hard but also you know anyone who is progging this and trying to learn it hopefully this will be a good example of how you know don't give up just it is very punishing you know you have one defeat in an early phase you're obviously gonna GG uh, it is very punishing but you can always recover um, and you'll see basically shit hits the fan in the Zaitan phase uh, but we managed to squeeze our way through in a very cool way so uh, so yeah we open with the orb I don't really do much there again because our group. I, if I start messing with the orb, it might move faster or than people are expecting. Blah 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 blah. Also, I don't really contribute to CC on this Herald build there. Um, not just out of greed, but it's better. The the Glint Alt does a lot of damage, so I would rather use it um, on the boss. Also, this close green here, uh, I try not to use too many facets. You can hit some skills from range, but obviously, don't spend too many facets. Um, while you're away from the group, because only the other close green person is going to get them if you do that. Uh, yeah, rotationally, this is a really simple build. It's just using the facet that gives of the burst of strength, facet of strength to give you a DPS buff, and then the lingering AOE afterwards. They're on the same cooldown, so you just use them in a pair. And the rest of the time, I just spam glint skills. Um, if you're playing high boon duration with the stability, you just go into Jarlis and throw a road down at the start and then wait a bit and throw a road before you leave and you can have really high stab up time with that as well. Uh, also you saw that death strike is kind of annoying. It's a big part of your damage and it will always move you to the outer ring of the boss's hitbox. So that's something you kind of have to deal with. Other classes can just stand still and it's a lot more simple. On this you do want to be careful of like accidentally stealing reds with it, right? If the mechs are coming in really aggressively you can end up stealing a red or something, so being a bit cautious about that. Uh, yeah, leaving, if you want to squeeze extra damage, you can use your facet of elements, because it's an AoE as you run out. And you can throw a Jarlis Road on the boss as well, as you run out on that. Do be cautious with the Jarlis Road on the second one, because it gives people stab, incidentally. And then if they accidentally walk in the void, it can mean they get feared off. I've never actually, we, this group hasn't had that happen, but I've always been a little bit nervous about it. Here you can greed damage in this little hitbox if you want. As you can see, I'm actually trying it a little bit here. Just because the fight is so boring in the early phases. I mean, what else is there to talk about? What else is there to do? <clears throat> um, and yeah, I just camped Glint. I, I have been wondering if I change my build, if I put more concentration into it, whether constantly incorporating Jarlis with hammers would be more damage. But I, I'm not convinced it would be. And it's a, if it is, it's very, very minor. I think, anyway. I don't know for sure. Uh, but yeah, come out, make the spread mechanic, standing on the inside slightly. And then these three facets that I popped there are the big ones to make sure quickness is high for people. I portal in. And uh, this is Jaw Mag dead, uh, Jaw Mag, Primordus dead. Pretty simple. The only long lingering AoE here with the stealth again is the facet of elements, but at the pace we play, that was never up for me. I would always have popped it early right after the portal because it's quickness and stuff. I swapped to staff here for bloodlust stacks. I'm on 25 for this run, which is a bit higher than average. Usually, I'm only around 19 to like that here. <clears throat> and yeah, here death strike feels really dodgy as well. Sometimes with these, like if you death strike with this central laser, I'm gonna death strike, and it's like, oh, is that gonna kill? It's never killed me, even though it moves you in theory right next to the black. The black also is only ticking damage; it's not a one shot, so it's okay. And then I, uh... oh, the the footage lags a little bit, I guess. Just keep spamming the facets. Basically, spam facets, never use a three, and spam your sword skills. With the two coming up very, very, very regularly. 
I mean, you can be a lot more. If they, uh, I, what I want is a first run of the day to be a clear at one point because my footage rotation and that stuff there would be very clean. But after a while, I always turn my brain off. So yeah, there you go. That's that's Krakatoric. <clears throat> Just as in the video on the main channel, if you guys have seen it, I'm gonna go off over in this direction while people fight the time caster. In my, the video on my main channel, I said that that was maybe like a dodgy move or not a great plan. I actually do really like it though because. They still have the previous quickness on them from me. They still have the boons. The uptime is fine on both subgroups, so it's just put the higher damage over there. Here, after I kill the first couple of crabs, uh, th this time you saw I did actually get some Jarlis on people. And here again, F2 and the Elite, just before this next pulse. That keeps people healthier, makes the job slightly easier for Hillmax. Again, I don't contribute to CCs on any of the amalgamate things. I can, and I always walk slightly close, because if it's looking bad, I will go and help. Mainly through the glint facet. If I was running hammer on the offhand, hammer would be very good for that as well. I know the community likes hammer. I I, I still think the safety of staff is, is better, but whatever. So here we're going to see the disaster. Basically, and I'll explain the situation before it happens. Basically, and I haven't an analysed this footage. I don't know why it happens. But when the seven targets, when this mechanic, when this spread occurs. Here I'm throwing the road back. Um... When this mechanic occurs during Zaitan, two people on the DPS stack are going to have oranges. I don't know why that occurred. Oh, here, if you look at my F2, I cancel cast it. It can be very rare that that happens. And then when I notice I cancel cast it, I... Oh, never mind. I thought I was going to cancel cast it again with my heal skill, which would have been annoying. But yeah, basically, I get a full wave of facets out before going back to Jarlis with the next road. It lines up perfectly. It's really, really well designed and implemented, this. Anyway, yeah, so there's two people on the DPS stack, so they're going to nuke and blow each other up. And the two people we have on close screen are Jarlis Heralds. So one of them's going to be downstate, and the other one's going to be me, and I'm rezzing. So I have the job of rezzing people and getting to close, and our Blink Mesmer is going to be a hero and back up on close, and we get really good footage of it. But this down is going to have a huge knock-on effect for the rest of the run. Anyway, so there's Giants. There's no spit, so we're fine with that. We move in. Throw up some more facets. And uh, I can't remember which spread it is. It might be the first one that's coming here. So we've got the fear. My move here, when I'm, wa I'm watching that red right now, when the red ends, I swap to Jarlis. Throw up the F2 and the ult. Stand in a blue ring, a healing screen. So look at these spreads. See, someone's going to get clipped by that there. And I could have helped. It it's easy to uh, hindsight. Anyway, so here, I need to go to that green. So I res as long as I can. And you might be like, oh, this is a wipe. But don't give up. I go onto the I jump dodge through the, the reach. Um... Our backup guy blinks on, so we pass the mechanic, and then we can go back to resing again. So, <clears throat> it looks like we've cut recovered now, and that's quite cool. You know, when that happens, you never think it's going to be the run. But we keep playing, and this is going to be a kill now, so... I really like that this was a, a kill with some, some wobbliness on it. So, what's going to happen now is, um... We're going to have a slow Zaitan. Because normally, you know, normally he'd be dying with this green, by the way. So genuinely, that's 25% damage we lost on all that resing and all the, the DPS we done. So the timing for the phase is very strict now. So instead of moving when we normally do, we have to wait for this red to end. And then we have to wait for the spread after the red. So well, you have, sorry, we have to basically tank this and then, and then press now during the spread. But what that means, and we did it later, and that's fine. We practiced that late transition a lot of times on our earlier sloppier runs, so that's fine. Salt spray spawns and so on. But there's a lot of damage in this phase, and now we all have healing down on us. And the healing down, so this is just going to keep having a knock-on effect now. Uh, we had a trickier transition, and now the healing down, people are going to start dying in this phase. So I just really wanted this. This is quite a slow, slow salt spray as well for us, unfortunately. He did very late CC. So I'm just trying to get into Jarlis here. And keep as much damage reduction up. But you see, guys are going down. Anyway, I think it's the healing down that caused that. Healing down just turned off. So here, we're just trying to push the orb. I know I'm not going to contribute to that CC anyway. I really want it on Su-1. So I go for the res. There's a rally anyway. And only now are we starting to really recover. And we're back to normal. We get a breather for a second. And we can push Su-1. So uh, then it's basically back to a normal run. Um, so yeah, there's just that one tricky little thing on the spread. And there's a lot to keep thinking about as the fight goes along. Anyway, yeah, so I get my super speed facet up early to help me get here. It's not really necessary, but it's just big boons and big damage before you have to run off. You can also hold death strike, which can help. I come back here. That's kind of scary as a position. 
I, I don't really know what advice I have to offer that wasn't in the, the original video. And then, um... Here's where if I was playing a very high boon duration build, where you'd lose, you know, usually we're around 20k DPS at this point, but with, and that's even with all the downtime phases, but with the slow Zaitan, we're, we're slightly below that. I think um, the other variety is, is a lot slower, so I don't know what our group's going to do here. Because if we lower the, the team's damage, we have different phase transitions and stuff. Anyway, yeah, then portal through, <coughs> dodge on. I mean, this really will be almost identical to what was on the other... The other video now. This is actually going to be a slightly slower Su-1-2 if I remember rightly though. Basically we're as a group we're at the point now where the whole fight's easy except the transition into Su-1-2 which is what's coming up. This thing coming up in a second is everything. Um, and here yeah I'm just backing out. It's like I throw a road up with the wave everyone jumps it but sometimes people get clipped by it. And what you'll usually find is a down state there. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so after this phase, basically, on this one, I think on the video on my main channel, I was on the other side. But this time I'm a circle. Really, I want to stack close with people and keep quickness going through this whole phase so that people have like that, like, overcapped 30 seconds of quickness. So really try and make sure that people are in your radius. And then we push back. And this is really good here because the, the orb's going to be sliding the other way at the perfect... Like, this was really, really good as a transition already, you can tell. Now I stop attacking, I don't want any lingering AoEs because I don't want to be revealed by the stealth. Here I'm standing on the circle, not the tag. I'm not quite sure what we're doing here. Oh no, well the tag's only just moved, uh, not not circle, heart. Anyway, yeah, we stealth and if you look I've still got quickness and might and stuff on people. Glint facet first there is the most important thing because you have to help them with the CC. And then yeah, get some burn down. This was actually a really, really weak Goliath burn. I left a bit early. Dodge on. You can stab on, I suppose, there as well. And here again, depending on if it's a high boon duration build or not, this would be where, critically, I would throw a lot of stab up by incorporating lots of Jarlis. I felt more comfortable doing it this way. This is very slow damage because the, the boss has perma prop until they deal with the Goliath and stuff because all the Virtuosos are on the other characters. <clears throat> on the other, the other targets. And here we jump, and I, I'll put a road up for that. Also, the thing is, on this variation, I like to have Jarlis ready in case I see a minor shockwave. There, I'm taking lots of damage, so I throw the heal up because obviously it reverses damage. It's a big heal. Um, yeah, I like, if I see a minor shockwave, what I really like to do is then, like, spirit boon Jarlis people with a tiny bit of stab. I, I like to be able to react to the unexpected thing there. Obviously, the high boon duration variant has, uh, like, basically infinite stab anyway if people stand in the road, I think. So here's a mini shockwave, see, and I, I stab it. The F2 that I throw up there is probably too early. I should wait with that F2 and use it before going into Glint. That would give people more uptime. Like, I could do it now, but I do double roads there, as you can see, actually. I do a road when I go into Jarlis and a road when I come out of Jarlis. And now the team's back on the boss. It doesn't have prot, and we're just going to kill it. My camera's probably pretty bad here again, because the destroyer was off the camera for good chunks of time, and I couldn't see it. And it might have charged me. But yeah, so that's uh, that's another HTCM casual commentary. No pausing, aggravating sitting around while you WP rambles about lore and stuff. And uh, yeah, guys, I don't know about this channel. I, I want to get more content on it. Depending on how things go in the future, I might be on Twitch again in a big way. But I'm thinking of putting like all the stream vods and stuff on YouTube itself, on the live section on YouTube itself. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with this. Yeah, I didn't get any good loot either. Um, and of course, I got my third channel as well, which I haven't put anything on for years and years and years and years. We'll see. We'll see what's going on, what I'm doing with the VODs and things. But fun little things like this, yeah. I, I Probably even over this summer, I should have been doing videos like this. And I could have been. I like doing really casual, random shit for this channel. But if the main channel isn't active, I just feel so guilty about it. And people are going to look at that and they're, they're going to say, well, why the fuck are you making random stuff for your second channel but not the first? And it's because, you know, I get insecure about low-quality shit. This is low quality stuff we'll see on WP2, but I'm fine with it, <laughs> but it means content. Oh yeah, and the flying bug as well. If you GG at the right time, you'll see that one of our characters is flying. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, yeah, seriously, that's it, guys. Uh, there's another random HTCM. Um, if I get a POV of Virtuoso and Hillmech, Hillmech's my next role. Uh, you might see something else on this, but we'll see. Take care now, guys. See you next time.